This is question number three at medium level, and this is again evaluating the indefinite integral. We took up another question number one, which was easy level, same thing evaluating the indefinite integral. It involved a little bit easier function, it was just a polynomial, and as complex as it could get was the polynomial being inside a square root. Here we're dealing with a trigonometric function, and so oftentimes people get uh, scared when they see trigonometric functions, but usually you'll be given a list of derivatives of trigonometric functions on the test because they are time consuming or uh, it's good to memorize some of them because only for those who are so used to working with them on daily basis they will have this just memorized like they'll know this but usually for the students who are taking it for a semester or two you know it's easy to forget so but just going to the test I think it makes most sense to have the, for the professors to give a, a, sh a sheet of paper with all the formulas if not just before the test try to uh, prove it yourself and memorize them but anyway so here we use method of substitution again indefinite integral which means by the time we have taken the antiderivative we have to remember to put the constant value of c to represent that it is the antiderivative of the entire family of all the antiderivatives that whose derivative is represented by this in, uh, function that's given inside this integral so method of substitution takes the form of a chain rule for us to see what should be assigned the variable u in place of a somewhat more complex function would be try to detect what is g at x so that that can be du and that can be u. So here dx can usually be dropped down here it doesn't make any difference it's usually something inside the square root so then what do we do with this sine squared x it doesn't seem so obvious off the on set but when we take the derivative of just looking at the function inside the square root not regarding the fact that it's in the denominator, it doesn't really matter uh, because when we substitute variable u, it takes care of all of that. So 1 minus cos, a uh, cotangent x, when we take the, the derivative of cotangent, uh, negative cotangent, it gives cosecant squared x. But we know that 1 over sine x is equal to cosecant squared x. So that already took care of that. So we can let this be, we can let this be u, and that being in the denominator taking that whole thing into consideration will be equal to du and so now let's proceed let u be 1 over cotangent x so this f uh, prime x will be like like 1 over square root thing so uh, u is just g at x and that's just within the square root being in the denominator and when we take derivative of u with respect to x, we get cosecant, because it's negative, takes care of that. Cosecant x, taking derivative with respect to x. And that is equal to 1 over sine squared x dx. So we are ready to proceed. So that will equal to definite integral. And well, before we do that, let's just first write 1 over 1 minus cotangent x. And we've got <clears throat> times by 1 over sine squared x d at x. So then now we can substitute with uh, this u right here. So this is going to equal to definite integral 1 over square root u. And we don't have to rearrange or anything because this is now just um, that. And so in place of this whole thing, we can plug in just du here. So now that's uh, du takes care of this entire thing. That can be written as square root. Oftentimes working with a square being in the denominator, it's sort of hard to uh, visualize what the antiderivative will be. So my recommendation is to change all of these expressions, radical expressions into uh, powers. Being in the denominator would be negative and square root is 1 over 2 du. And taking the antiderivative of that will be u minus 1 over 2 plus 1 and that will be 1 over 2 and so 1 over 2 here and we have to add the constant factor c simply find that will be u 1 over 2 and it was 1 over 2 there so it's going to be 2u plus c then we have to substitute back in what we have substituted this variable uh, with u we have to substitute back in the original variable which is x this whole expression we have to plug back in so this is going to be 2 and 1 minus cotangent x to the power of 1 over 2 plus c. That can be written as 2 square root 
1 minus cotangent x plus c. And that is our final answer. Uh, to make sure in the process whether you've got your answer right is to take the derivative sort of at this place because substituting the variable u back with the original variable is not a problem. But just to make sure that we've taken the derivative correctly, you can take the derivative of here. So 1 over 2 is going to come down, and it will cancel out with this 2, and this will be subtracted by power 1, which will make it into negative power 1 over 2, and this brings us back to this. And so we have uh, got the antiderivative correctly. So that is our answer. So to, for method of substitution, evaluating the indefinite integral involving trigonometric functions, it's not that hard at all. So this can actually be easy level 2. So once again, figure out the pattern and see which should be assigned a variable u and then take derivative of that really quickly just uh, try to visualize and see you know if that makes up the rest of the component that's given in this integral and so here in this case it was pretty straightforward we didn't even have to rearrange but oftentimes it's not obvious off the bat so involving trigonometric functions my recommendation would be try to simplify as much as possible when it comes to uh, reciprocal functions try to flip it back again to see if you make sense of this derivative relationship taking place with the u and du and once you have figured out this chain rule relationship, then uh, you can proceed with uh, substitution, taking the antiderivative by adding the constant factor c because it asks for the indefinite integral. It's easy to forget, so please remember that. And then plug in back in the original expression, and that is the final answer.